Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to be showcasing my upgraded Dell laptop. Welcome back then guys. So this is my Dell N5110 laptop. So it's a 2011 laptop, so 13 years old, believe it or not now. So I bought this as a faulty laptop uh, about a year or two ago. The fault was it would turn on and then immediately turn back off again and you couldn't get far enough into the operating system to do anything with it. So I figured it'd be worth buying it and giving it a go to fix it and see what I could do with it. And funny story, turns out all it was was a short on the keyboard that meant it was continuously pressing the power button and the moment you tried to turn it on it was turning it back off again. So I replaced the keyboard and discovered that pretty much everything else was functional and working. So I got to using it and to testing it and I, to be honest I quite liked it. It was quite a good laptop, a lot of connectivity and the screen's really clear. I decided I wanted to keep it and use it for myself for work purposes. So I'll go ahead and give you the original specs for the machine. So it started off with an i3-2310M processor, which is a dual core 2.1 gigahertz I believe processors. In terms of the RAM, it had four gigabytes in the form of two times two gigabytes of DDR3 and I believe it was 1066 megahertz. Then moving on to the hard drive, it had a 500 gigabytes Western Digital Blue laptop hard drive. Then for the operating system, it had Windows 7 on it and that was still installed when I managed to get it to come on. The wireless card that was in it was a BG and N card. The other thing this particular model had as well was onboard dedicated graphics. So it had a NVIDIA GeForce 525M on board as well. I think it was had one gigabyte of video memory as well. So before I go into the upgrades I actually performed on this, I'm going to just show you the physical hardware connectivity on this. So starting on the right hand side is something that we don't actually see that often anymore on newer laptops and that is a CD drive here. Obviously it's not absolutely essential to have a CD drive on your laptop in 2024 but it does help when you get people occasionally with CDs and they want to recover information off them. Moving on to the next two ports and that is a headphone jack port and a mic jack port now more modern devices have opted for the four pole mic and headphone jack combination so you just have one jack and that serves your left and right headphone as well as your mic so in order to use one of those headsets microphones you would need to have a splitter that converts it back to the old twin style but yeah with the use of adapter still usable and lastly on this side we have the first USB 3. Now this is a 5 gigabyte a second interface so theoretical speeds of around 500 meg a second. Not as fast as some of the newer USB versions but still better than USB 2. So moving on to the back of the laptop now and starting off on the left hand side we have a Kensington locking point. For those of you that do not know, if you buy a Kensington lock, then it allows you to lock your laptop to a cable, which ultimately means if you leave it on a desk in a public place, it can't be stolen, or at least it can't be stolen without making a huge mess of the device itself. At that point, it makes it pointless to be stolen in the first place. Next, we have an ethernet port, which is a 10, 100 megabytes interface. Then another USB 3 port, the same as the other one on the other side. This obviously here is the battery. Next we have a VGA port here for connecting an external display. Then that's just the charging port there on the back. Okay so here we have the left hand side. This is a USB but this is only a USB 2 so you wouldn't use this one for data transfer you would just use that for like a mouse or a keyboard or a combination of the two this here is obviously the fan grate for the processor slash graphics card then next we have an hdmi 
which supports up to 1080p output. And because you've got this as well as the VGA on the backside, it supports up to three separate monitors simultaneously, which for a 13 year old laptop is really quite good. A lot of modern laptops won't have this functionality unless you buy a very expensive peripheral. So next we have something that you don't see a lot of anymore at all. And that is a eSATA port. So an eSATA port is essentially what it sounds like. It's an external SATA connection, which means if you have the right cable, you can plug in a SATA drive directly and utilize the SATA controller rather than the USB controller, which means you get the much higher speeds of transfer. In all honesty, the majority of people will never bother using that. But for those of you that don't need that functionality, this port also doubles up as an additional USB 2.0 port, so you can plug a USB into this port as well. And finally on this side, we have an SD card reader, and so that's pretty much it, guys. Okay, so moving on now to the upgrades that I performed on this. And we'll start off with the first one that you can see the moment you take the palm rest off. And that's this little guy here, the Wi-Fi 6E card. So this is the original card, the Intel Centrino Wireless N 1030. So this supports Wi-Fi 1, 3 and 4, which in letter terms is B, G and N. The Bluetooth version on this card is 3.0, I believe. So not too bad. So I'll just give you a demo guys. So as you can see here, we've got the Intel Centrino Wireless N installed and we're connected to the workshop Wi-Fi. And as you can see, it's Wi-Fi 4 on the 2.4 gigahertz band and the maximum theoretical speed is 8787, but to be quite honest, I don't think it will reach that. So we'll just go ahead and do a test and see what happens. So 61, 62, 63. Don't think we're gonna get any better than that. 63. Well, I think it hit 64 there just about maybe and so upload 41 42 yeah we're gonna get much better than that so yeah that's that's about it guys so we do actually get 500 megabytes up and down in the workshop so considering that it's not a very good result that isn't so I'm going to go ahead and put the AX210 in and we'll do a task with that one. Okay guys, so now we've installed the Wi-Fi 6E card, so the AX210 there. And on the same SSID, but as you can see this time, we're on the network band 5 gigahertz. And the link speed is much higher. Theoretical link speed is much higher. Um, we're on Wi-Fi 5, so not Wi-Fi 6, but still a modern protocol. So we're just going to go ahead and do a test now and see what the difference is. And as you can see there, massive difference. We're up at 300 megabytes a second now. Hard to believe it's the same laptop, but as you can see there, 290 megabytes, 300. And same with upload, around about the same, just slightly lower. But as you can see, big difference there. So there you go. So not only does this upgrade allow you to connect to the five gigahertz radio bands, which are faster, it also includes MooMimo technology, which essentially allows you to connect via multiple antennas as opposed to a single one, which in turn increases stability, reduces latency, and just increases speed in general. The other point to note is, as it says there, there's Bluetooth 5.2 on this card as opposed to the Bluetooth 3.0 on the Centrino. So that's another nice bonus. 
Okay, so the next upgrades are on the other side of the board, so I'll just take this out. And we'll just weave this to one side. So the first very obvious upgrade here is this crucial SSD. So this is a MX500 500GB. So this is the original hard drive in the laptop. It's a 500GB Western Digital Blue laptop hard drive. Normal spinning hard disk. So the main reason these were used was cost because back in 2010, 2011, SSDs were quite expensive to be honest. Over the past few years, SSD prices have crashed so a lot more companies are just putting SSDs straight in in the production machines. Yeah, not particularly fast, um, cheap to buy, but not fast and moving parts wear out so long term it would eventually fail. So yeah, not great in 2024. So the SATA controller on this laptop is 3.0, which means it can utilize the 6 gigabyte a second speeds. In real world speeds, that's probably about 550 megabytes a second maximum. There's no way the original drive would ever be able to utilize that speed, but this one definitely, if not very, very close. The computer boots up and shuts down a lot faster. It's just faster in general, to be honest, a lot faster than using a normal drive. So, yeah, I just had to do the SSD upgrade on this. So the next upgrade is the RAM, which is just here. So this is one of the original RAM sticks, not sure where the other one's gone, but it's just two gigabytes of PC3. 10600S speed, so that's 1333 megahertz, I believe. Four gigabytes of RAM was the absolute bare minimum for Windows 10. So now that we're on Windows 11, I just wouldn't opt to go for four gigabytes of RAM. So I'll just take one of these out for you. So this is DDR3 RAM, 8 gigabytes, 12800S, which means it's 1600 megahertz speed. And there is two of these. So that makes up 16 gigabytes. The maximum RAM that this system supports is 16. So this is as much as I can go with, but it will make a huge difference when I start to do multiple things at once. The system will have to recycle RAM in order to make space. It will just continue to run smoothly and be a lot happier. You don't see an instant benefit with this unless you start opening a load of programs at once, but just seeing it there and knowing that I've got it available, it's really good. So we'll just put that back now. So the last upgrade on this side of the board is here, but I'm not actually going to take the heatsink off and show you because it'll just waste the paste that I put on it. It hasn't been on that long, so I don't really want to waste it. But I can show you the original processor here that used to be in that slot. So as you can see, there's a screw there and it will just go on top like that and the heatsink goes on top of that just to cool it down. So the next question you're going to ask is, what processor did you upgrade it to? And I didn't mess around at all. I knew what processors would fit in this particular socket and I went with the absolute best one that you could put in there. And that is the i7-2960XM Extreme processor. Four cores, eight threads, over two and a half gigahertz speed and turbo boost over three. Easily the most noticeable upgrade once I'd reassembled it and turned it on again. Everything was lightning fast, and despite all the extra power, the heatsink here cooled it very well, which is even better considering it has to cool the GPU which is under here as well. So those are the standard hardware upgrades that I did on this machine. Okay guys, so I've left this particular upgrade to the end because I believe it's the most unique upgrade that you will ever see in this particular model of laptop. And it all starts with this board. So this particular board is the USB and headphone jack port and mic port, also the internet port too. So this board can be seen when you remove this hatch. It's visible just there like that. 
and when I first took the hatch off, when I first had the laptop, I noticed this straight away and I saw these pins here, which straight away I could tell that they are mini PCIe connection pins. For whatever reason, there's no port attached, no interface. So you were unable to make use of the connection. Did a bit of research into this and found out that the people that when they bought this, if they stipulated that they wanted a wireless WAN card so that they could use this laptop away from home but on the internet, then they were able to do so. What that meant is that the majority of the mini PCIe functionality wasn't present. So that includes the ability to use an NVMe drive or a SATA drive and so on. You couldn't even use a Wi-Fi network card. Only the USB element of this mini PCIe socket is actually live and usable. So I did a bit of research into what other peripherals can be connected by a USB and I did manage to find a suitable upgrade, something that I could make use of. And so I'll just lift this plate and I'll show you what that is now. So as you can see there, that's the mini PCIe interface there and we have this little device. So this is a micro SD to mini PCIe adapter and it runs solely off of USB. So the moment I connected this to the computer, Windows detected the micro SD card that I put in there. This particular card is a 500 gigabyte micro SD card which means there's plenty of space there. Now, I realize that there is a SD slot on the side of the laptop anyway. You know, I could have put this micro SD into a standard SD adapter and done it that way. However, the reason I prefer this is because it allows me to have a secure backup location that's permanently inside the laptop, allows me to back up the boot drive of the laptop onto something separate than itself but also ensures that I can't forget it. It allows me to restore a backup at any time even when I'm out on site or if I'm away from the office. Also means that I don't have to remember to lug around a hard drive with me or anything else. And at some point I will utilize the additional micro SD slot there as you can see because there's two and give myself some extra storage again. Really tidy, just fits there next to the RAM. Uh, it's out of the way and it doesn't add any size or anything to the laptop at all. Really tidy and just a really, really worthwhile upgrade. Quite a cheap one to perform as well. Okay guys, so that is all of the hardware upgrades that I performed on the laptop. Um, I did also mention that the laptop started its life as a black laptop. And so I did replace the palm rest as well as the hinge covers and the lid on the back with the blue counterpart just because I thought it looked nicer. And then I also got rid of the original i5 sticker and replaced it with an i7 Extreme sticker. I also got a NVIDIA GE4 sticker and I made my own Windows 11 sticker so it's all labelled up nice. Not a requirement, just nice for aesthetics. But yeah, to summarise guys, it's a really good computer now that I've upgraded it and being on Windows 11 as well, going from 7, it just modernises it a lot. If I had to point out a downside to this particular laptop, then it would be that the keyboard itself isn't backlit so you have to be sat in a lit room in order to use the laptop but other than that there isn't really any downsides to owning this particular laptop over owning a more modern one. I suppose you could say that it's slightly thicker and also heavier than newer laptops but me personally I don't find that an issue at all. So I do also have another one of these for sale, a black one that has an i5 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 250 gigabyte SSD and it's also running Windows 11. I've also pre-installed OpenOffice on there so you get free access to an office suite. So if you're interested in buying it or you want some more information on it then let me know. I can upgrade that particular laptop further as well if it's something you require. You could also have any of the upgrades grades that I have bought for this particular laptop but that's going to be all for today's video guys so I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.